Awards! Yeah. Here we go for your High Priestess of Jams, China Star! Yeah. And your ringmaster for tonight's event, Morgan Pipton! Yeah. We've got a great show for you tonight, and it wouldn't be an award ceremony without awards. And so we've got a lineup of fabulous presenters. These people are icons in the Olympia music scene. And they will be presenting this. will be presented for judges pick and fan pick in a variety of musical categories. Oh, but as far as it is to judge and narrow down, uh, what we hasten to add is that tonight isn't about appointing the supreme musician of Olympia or anything of that nature. Uh, what we're looking to do is celebrate the, uh, the scene that it comes out of, the, uh, to take a snapshot yeah. of where we are as a, as a musical town. But before he goes too far, when you came in tonight, you were handed a ballot. Were you not? Yes. Woo! If not, you can find more in the, in the lobby out there. Um, but on that ballot, there's a listing of one to five. In addition to our awards, we've got a fabulous lineup of live acts, and these will be the people you will be voting for. These awards will be for best band. And uh, this Best Band Award will be posted to our website, oleamusicawards.com. So, let's face it, we all know you guys are judging us tonight, you're judging this show, so put it in writing and make your vote count. All right. yeah. <laughs> now the point is, we are here about honoring legacy, and uh, there's, there's not enough night to fit in all the music we'd like to honor. This town has produced a ton of amazing acts, which I will now demonstrate by challenging China's star to a 90s name-dropping duel. Oh, really? Oh. Okay, well, I accept your challenge. Let me think. Uh, the Bangs. Steve Fisk. Ooh. Carl. Pell Mell. Lois Maffeo. Old Time Religion. The Need. Nirvana. Don't do it, Sergio. Boom, now, Bill. Brad Mobile. Princess. Miranda July. Mira. <laughs> Space Ballerinas. Heavens to Betsy, man! Pick yourself up! We have a show to do here. <laughs> you winner, China Star! So as I was saying, it's not about, you know, really elevating any musician over another so much as celebrating the scene we come out of, celebrating just the, the churning creativity that exists in Olympia, all the activity of musician meeting musician, That's linking right. up to create shows and bands and have a good time. I mean, you see it up and down Fourth Avenue, you see it in basements, in the back porch, in uh, all these cleared out house shows where people Hallelujah. are playing. That's right, that's right, sister. <laughs> like, people here aren't playing for, you know, because someone important is watching, or because someone's gonna hand them an award. Definitely not because they're getting paid most of the time. People Woo! here play because they love it. Because they love it. I and mean, they love a good show enough that they're willing to stand under exposed wire and right. bare insulation in the moldiest basement just for a chance to do it. And that's why it works here. That's why it's produced so many bands that have gone on to straight up kick a dent in the culture of the very nation. Woo! Yeah. Can we get another amen? Well, let me amen. Use it. Can I get an amen? So that's why it works here, and that's why we're honoring it. Yeah, so to, uh, to get this thing going, we've got a great show for you tonight. We've got fabulous live acts. These people were voted on by write-in votes on our website over the last few months. They didn't choose to be here. They were voted here. So before you leave, make sure you check out the merch table in the lobby. <laughs> so here they are, tonight's lineup. We have Horse Bodies. <laughs> We've got the Blackberry Bushes! Woo! We've got the fabulous Downey Brothers! Yeah! And we will be having Olympia's debut of the Pop Horticle, Radio 8-Ball as a live event! Yeah! And to kick it all off, oh, let's, get the, let's get the hand clap started right now. I want to get the energy going right now for our first day. Here we go. Yeah. It's my Taj Mahal, my Tom Waits, by the classics of blues. 
pick for instrumental. He said, reaching into the other schmancy envelope. Derek M. Johnson. Well, someone will accept these for him. I'm sure I'll take them to my place because they're really cute props. I mean, are these great looking or what? Great big props to you. And in the other category, Radio 8 Ball. So if I was in the audience, please come up and get your award. Nobody wants me there. I don't feel quite as abandoned. about the medal in Olympia until you get to be a part of it. And when you get to be a part of it, you realize that these motherfuckers haven't turned up to 11. Yeah. One more, one more. And that extra push over the edge of the cliff. They got it going on. I've seen bands from Sweden and Japan come over to play in Olympia. And people travel from California and Canada all around just to see bands play in Olympia. We got our shit together. Yeah. Woo. yeah. And I'm here tonight to help celebrate the mosh pits and the bloody noses, and I don't want to eat these. And the bloody noses and the crushed beer cans and the raging awesome that is metal in Olympia. And what are, what are our nominees? Audacity, Blackbird, Bone Shaker. All right, so uh, is there some sort of... Oh, and where, where are your dog? Yeah. So is there some sort of L envelope or some shit? All right, cool. Metal. What, what's this shit? Hold on. Give me a second. I'm gonna get my shit together. For the judges' pick and the fans' pick, combination award goes to Murder Your God.
All right, and we got your next act coming up right now. Um, this is an innovative act. It's a pop oracle. It began as a show on Chaos Radio 10 years ago, and since then, in about five minutes, we'll have our next act ready to go. In the meantime, feel free to hit up our concession stand and our beer garden upstairs. We'll be right back in the inside, folks. KS Radio some 10 years ago to pro prognosticate and uh, look into the veil, the misty veil of tomorrow through the magic of music. I'd like to welcome Mr. Andros Jones! Welcome to Radio 8 Ball, give us a shake. We're live on stage, tempting fate This full moon night Putting questions to the songs which we will randomly Select here with the help of our friends Synchronicity And now it's time for Radio 8 Ball Give us a shake It's the Radio 8 Ball Each shake, tarot, and the coin toss All rely on the random chaos Carl Young, John Cage, John Lennon, your host. That's me, Andras. I subscribe to it in theory. Radio 8 Ball, give us a shake. Chef, do we do? We're live on stage, attempting fate. Should do be do? Putting questions to the songs which we will randomly select here with the help of our friend Synchronicity and the answers are free On the Radio 8 Ball Give us a shake It's the Radio 8 Ball Show Radio 8 Ball Radio Oh, oh, oh It's the Radio Ball Show. Since you probably know it from the radio, you don't know it from the live show. What we do is we have a list of eight songs from Sandman. Can we get them up on the screen there, Polly? We'll see them in just a second. Eight songs. As you can see, there are eight numbers on the wheel of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The songs will appear in just a moment. Uh, if a song, if the wheel lands on the same number twice, we will break the tie with the Radio 8 cards, which I have right here. And that is how we divine the answers to these questions. So, the way this usually works, oh, I also want to tell you we're going to be joined by a very special celebrity Skype in uh, halfway through this show. That is Dino Stamatopoulos. He plays the character Starburns on the TV show Community. Any fans of the TV show Community out there? If you are a fan of the TV show Community, you know that last week Starburns died and had his funeral. So we will be resurrecting him on this stage, doing a resurrection ritual right here on this full moon night. A pop resurrection ritual. So, there's a lot in store for you. Plus, how many of you filled out question cards? Do you have a question card? If you have it, hold it up above your head. Okay, a few of you do. If you haven't already got your question card, you can get one from uh, the lady in red right here. Stand up, Scarlet Lady, right there. Get a question card from her. We'll be taking your questions later. Okay, I think that deals with most of the business. So, why don't we bring down that music? And I will begin this show by asking my own question. 
So, it's really fantastic to be back on this stage. It's been a long time. And I'm, every time I have to ask a question, and that's the challenge I give myself before every show, I have to really try and figure something that's the most transparent and honest and also the best showbiz kind of question for you. So I've been thinking, uh, one of the reasons I'm here is because I wrote a book called Accidental Initiations in the Kabbalistic Tree of Olympia. And uh, while I was out talking about this book, I was talking about this event, and then the fans of Radio 8 Ball and all that voted, this, voted us onto the stage. And there's a line in the book that says, revolutions eat their children. And I was born on the front line of the sexual revolution. My family moved here. 1969, my father was uh, one of the founding faculty at Evergreen, and uh, my mother was one of the first wave of Evergreen feminists to land on these shores, to be reborn two and a half decades later as the Riot Girls, who didn't like me much, can't really blame them. I did, though, led to much frustration. Uh, I made a lot of art about it, I made a lot of noise about it. And then about two and a half years ago, in an alchemical ritual, which I document in my book, I married myself out in the Kabbalistic Tree of Olympia. <laughs> and I found that all of these uh, masculine, what I thought of as my masculine qualities that had gotten me in so much trouble, all of my passion and my intensity and my uh, righteous anger, that it got shot through with this divine, I can only say, you know, cuntish essence that just filled me up and unleashed these previously latent qualities. And I realized that uh, much as I didn't know it and much as it might flip people's shit for me to say it, I, had, I was and always had been a riot girl. And then maybe that's why I had so much trouble with it here in this town. And uh, so I've been listening to all, you know, I've just, I've been listening to this feminine voice inside of me that sounds a lot like me, telling me all kinds of, like, crazy, crazy shit. Like that I'm a riot girl, that, like, you don't need a pussy to be a riot girl any more than you need a dick to do anything. <laughs> um, and so my question, I'm going to lead, this is leading to a question, but I want to be transparent here with you. It's not whether or not a man can be a riot girl, because obviously one can. But can you, my fellow Olympians, deal with a man who's a riot girl? Now, I, I, I don't, I'm not asking you, because I know that the answer right now is clearly no, from my own experience. But that's why we have a pop oracle, because we can go, we can peel back the layers a little bit. Um, so now I'm going to go to the pop oracle, we're going to spin, and we're going to see what song we get to see. If, to see if you, if you can't be rocked by my talk, sir, you're not listening. Here we go. We're going to spin the wheel of eight. Can Olympia handle a man who's a ride girl? Number eight. Sugar Bank Hank, way up at the top. Let's have that Radio 8 Ball logo up there. All right, here, here's the answer, Randy <laughs> Ross. Sugar Bank Hank, she's a real good gal. I'm her boo and she's my pal. on my phone As you can tell I'm not at home I'm with the sugar bank She's my sugar bee And we're down in the swamp with the Spanish moss wrapped around our knees Oh let the barefoot trees come running Let the barefoot trees come running Let the barefoot trees come running back to me Sugar Bank Hank, she's a real good friend. She's gonna love me till the end. Have one baby, 
maybe ten. Go to heaven, start again, oh sugar like sweet as honey. Down the swamp with Spanish moss and wrapped around our knees. Whoa, 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 sugar bank. Sweet as a honey bee. She my honey bee, honey bee. And we're down the swamp with Spanish moss and wrapped around our knees. Oh, let the barefoot trees come running. Let the barefoot trees come running. Let the barefoot trees come running back to me. Sugar bank gang. So, uh, Sugar Bank Hank, as the answer to my question, can my fellow Olympians handle a man who's a riot girl? Uh, it's interesting. I, I'm a, a, well, tell me a little bit about the background of that song. Tell us a little bit. I know some of my own, but... Uh, well, uh, Hank is my nickname for, uh, for my wife, Hannah, Hannah Kassam, formerly of Olympia. Now, uh, in Missoula, we just did have our first baby. Woo! We have nine more of them. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, that's, that's, the, the, the Barefoot Trees is a reference to a Nizar Kabani poem. Uh, he's, he was the uh, Syrian, like, poet laureate until he died, kind of. This is actually the Syrian flag, and uh, Hannah's half Syrian, and I just, uh, wanted to reference some Syrian poetry in that song. Uh, I, I think the end of his poem goes like, when I love a woman, all the trees run barefoot toward me. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Um, well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, the song, the, my question does come from having performed a, sort of an alchemical marriage ritual on myself. And, uh, you know, I guess, I mean, the first thing I get is like, oh, obviously, you know, who cares? Like, if you're, if you're in love with someone, you don't care what your neighbors think, ultimately. Um, I mean, ultimately, you, I guess, on, ultimately, you would like for people to accept uh, the way you love as being uh, natural and okay. But, um, but if it's true, then, you know, if you're, all, if you're all wound up together down in that mud from which the lotus blossom grows, it doesn't really, really matter. Um, um, and then the only other thing is that, yeah, that I guess uh, that's the piece that I maybe I didn't communicate, because that would be the one amplification, is that that divine essence, it is, this, it is sugary as all hell. It is like this sugar bank that lives inside of us. Um, and synchronicity is one way of unlocking it. There's all these ways of unlocking it. Um, I invite you to check out my book, which is out for sale in the lobby. It's about... Uh, this magical item that lives right outside these doors out in the in Sylvester Park. But that's a little demonstration of how Radio 8 Ball works. Now we're going to collect the questions that you've selected and we can have you up here and it gets a lot more fun when we get some more people up on stage. So, if you have a question, please hold it above your head. Come on, I know you got question cards. Scarlet ladies, would you please be so kind as to gather them up, bring them up on stage. And while we're doing that, I should tell you, and Paulo, if you could get those pictures ready, um, this episode of Radio 8 Ball at the Capitol Theater is brought to you in part by Sync Book Press, the uh, publishers of Sync Book, a 26 authors discussing synchronicity and the media. It will be up there in a second. Also, there it is. Also, they, they released my book, Accidental Initiations and the Kabbalistic Tree of Olympia. And as of today, the new book from Douglas Bowles, Winter's Labyrinth. And I invite you to check them all out. My books at Last Word Books and the rest of them where you can get online. Okay, so we have the questions. We have, do we have all the questions up here yet? Okay, well, we've got enough to start. So, Sandman, why don't you reach in here with your left hand? and pick the first questioner, the first participant here on Radio 8 Ball, the Pop Oracle. Do I say their name? I'll read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Danny. Come on up, Danny. Give it up for Danny. This is 
really good because I'm on my way to the hospital. My daughter's having a birth, uh, my granddaughter tonight. I'm also a card carrying member of Chaos Radio. I like T.G. Hokum and all the uh, phasma phasmagorio audiological phasmagorical and the uh, world music, the blues, Danny, anything that Chaos does. Would you read your question? Will my granddaughter be born tonight, before midnight? Okay, okay. Well, uh, would you spin the wheel? Can we see the song list, Paulu? Song list, Paulu. Song number two is... Hey, Danny, you gotta stay up here on stage. <laughs> Song number two is Giddy Up. Obviously, Giddy Up. You gotta, see if you can sit down here, Danny. See if you can. Giddy Up. Alright. Giddy Up. Here's a song I wrote for my, uh, my baby daughter who was born three and a half months ago on January 19th. And, uh, yeah, Giddy Up. I'm so giddy, so giddy, so giddy, giddy up. She makes my heart giddy up. She's so pretty, so pretty, so pretty, 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 so pretty. Not to mention pretty witty, she got a puppy named Petey and a guppy named Greedy and a monkey that she feeds with a sippy cup. She got a turtle named Tony and a gerbil named Joni and a pony that she loads into a pickup truck. A giddy up, she got a bear named Smokey and they do the hokey pokey with the okies and the folkies and the gutter punks. She got a sparrow named Sammy who flew from Alabama and a spider that she hides in a buttercup. A giddy up, I'm so giddy, so giddy, so giddy, giddy up. She makes my heart giddy up. I'm so clumsy with the onesie when I try to zip it up. Yeah, she makes my heart giddy up. She drops a slinky and the binky and she makes me gotta pick them up. She makes my heart giddy up. She's so pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Pretty, pretty, so pretty, not to mention pretty, witty, up, yo, a giddy up. Giddy up. The answer to Danny's question, will his baby be born before midnight? What do you, uh, Sam, a little background, you give us a little bit of background on that song, but anything else you want to tell us? Maybe it's about speeding up the process, let's get this over with. Yeah, the giddy up process, <laughs> yeah. Obviously you are like, you feel, your energy feels like you're riding a horse. I am feeling the energy, and I'm feeling the giddy up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it shortly after midnight. Or not. Okay, well, I think the answer is... I'm feeling giddy up, so I'm thinking yes. I didn't want yes. to go that mile, but I'm thinking giddy up. I'm thinking the answer to the question will probably be yes. Yeah, yeah five, 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 baby. So giddy up, well, let's just keep it moving. Give it up for Danny. Thanks, Danny. Hey, Danny, wait. Can you pick the next person? Hey, Danny. Danny, come on back. No one Danny, come back for one second. I want you to pick the next person. Just reach in. Yeah. Without, look, without looking, just reach in without looking. Pick the next person. Just sit here. Okay. Okay, Maxine. Can we get Maxine to come on down? Next question. Give it up for Danny and give it up for Maxine. Bring it in on down for Radio Eight Ball. And I like that. Giddy up. That's a good theme for the show. We want to keep it moving. Maxine, come on. Don't be shy. Come on down, Maxine. 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 Maxine is doing the, the IDs. She can't do it. She's checking IDs. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just. Why'd you put her hands in the thing in there? Lee Brooks. Lee Brooks. Come on down, Lee Brooks. Your question for the Pop Oracle awaits. Oh! There you go. There you go. I hope I don't regret this one. Will the Brown Edition win an award tonight? Okay. Will the Brown... What do you guys think? What do you guys think? No, no, no. We don't, no, 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 no. Oh, we don't do that. Okay. Spin the wheel. Yep.
before I forget, uh, Ethan Tucker wanted me to put that off to the side there so he could grab it. Yeah, that great reggae band, right? So good. I see man. Damascus. Lightning struck the tree. My baby was sleeping under. Lightning struck the tree. Lightning. Lightning struck the tree. My baby was sleeping under. Then the thunder came crashing down on me. Moses was a good man. Moses was a shy man. Moses was the cowboy who turned into a diamond. He came riding from the southeast with his mouthpiece testifying. All these fences are offensive to the senses of the Lord. But Jesus was the poor boy who would not play with war toys. With parables and miracles, he brought the people more joy. He came burning in the Zion with seven lamps blazing. Jesus said, I am the light. The lion was a lion. Well, lightning struck the tree. Baby was sleeping under. Lightning struck the tree. Lightning. Lightning struck the tree. My baby was sleeping under. Then the thunder came crashing down on me. Yes, it did. Muhammad was the prophet. The prophet was a shaman. The shaman was a messenger. May peace be upon him from the time he met Kadisha to his exile in Medina. Everywhere Muhammad went, the lamb was sure to follow lightning struck the tree. Baby was sleeping under lightning struck the tree. Lightning set me free. Lightning struck the tree. My baby was sleeping under, then the thunder came crashing down on me. Yes, it did. Somebody tell Alice I'm not in Kansas anymore I'm in Damascus now with Dorothy at the orgy Watching Debbie does Dallas in the lightning Baby, lightning Lightning, oh baby And then the thunder came crashing down on me Well, if you believe in giants I believe in giants and if you believe in science, I believe in science. I believe in flatbed forms, amazing grace, and Tracy Lawrence. All these fences are offensive. All these fences are offensive. All these fences are offensive. Uh, to the law. <laughs> from Sandman, the answer to Lee Brooks' question is Brown Edition going to win an award today? Uh, I have a, look, Sam, you want to tell us a little bit about that song before I tell you my ideas about how that answers the question? Well, I wrote that song on a tour through Olympia about four years ago. I'm li I've been living in North Dakota the last six, seven years, and now I'm in Montana. But uh, there was a lightning storm that hit, and this was back to Hannah. Um, it was like the first uh, few months that we'd known each other, and maybe some of you remember, like, lightning rarely, there's rarely thunderstorms in Olympia. But two or three years ago, there was a big one, and uh, some of you might have heard a boom, like a big old crack right in downtown Olympia, and uh, it happened to be in the backyard of Hannah's house, and it just, it split this tree in half, turned it into like a chicken, chicken meat, it looked like. It was amazing. And I just thought, wow, that's like seminal influences. It got me inspired to think about all the prophets and prophetesses who have been struck by uh, inspiration. So it would be like lightning striking if it was if you were to win. Uh, <laughs> there is, but there is another thing I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking also it's like, I mean, it's fun. The, this game of, of awards is kind of fun, but I think that like the artistic spirit does kind of find the fences of like you're better, or I'm better, or that, like, music isn't really a competition, so that 
this, on some level, those fences are offensive to our soul. Everyone's, everyone's a winner just by learning to play their instrument. Sound like a kindergarten teacher. I am like a doll win. Hey, doesn't everybody win? I am like a kindergarten teacher who would get fired. Um, yeah, sing it, sister, brother, sister, brother. Exactly. Um, well, that's it. Uh, give, We're gender neutral here. Give it up. Give it up for Lee Brooks and the Brown Edition. I hope you win. We're getting our. Uh, do I get to interpret? Oh yeah, well, go ahead, tell oh, okay. us. Sorry, what, tell us what you got. Well, I would say uh, we've been struck by lightning um, even before this, and uh, we have a great group of people, and we're not ashamed to um, yield any award to anybody. Uh, this is a great bunch of people, including one of our guitar players is also of Tark. Uh, Tark and Lazier up for the same category, and he's our lead guitar player, so definitely wouldn't be sour about that. We're not sour about anything, um, as long as those that really need to be appreciated are, and those that hurt themselves for the sake of music. Let's give it a round of applause for all the Texan people. My, my interpretation of that is that uh, uh, being Damascus and all, and by the way, hi. Hey, Lee. Sorry I missed you when I went through Montana. Right. Um, <laughs> my interpretation is that um, being a biblical in proportion, um, I'm good with whatever happens. And um, I think we're deserving of, of every word we get, and I think everybody else out there is as well, and I think acceptance is what we're talking about. Cool, give it up for Lee Brooks. That was, uh, so the, you may notice that I'm, I'm, I'm hustling him along. It's because we have our celebrity Skype-in guest waiting on the line. Before we bring him on, we're going to show you a quick little video of his, uh, a little tribute that they made to him on this show for his, for the death of his character, Starburns. Our fabulous tech is in, uh, he's encased in amber, which is why he moves very slowly, but it's superhuman. Let's hear some music. Ladies and gentlemen, the resurrection of Starburns. Do you know Stan of Topolos? Less, yeah. There he is. Hi. Hi. Hey. Look at this Make him full screen, if you would. There. Dino, say hello to the folks. You see that, see that moon? <laughs> The moon is as, is as hot as the sun tonight. I think so. Wow, that is huge. Yeah. So, uh, Dino, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank. You. Uh, do you feel like Do you feel unburdened now that you've done the You've done the this death ritual on TV. Uh, I uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm so happy that I'm dead. Uh, yeah, and I hate acting. <laughs> well, you do, for someone who hates it, you do you do a wonderful job, and, we, and you'll, you'll be sorely missed. You know, I just uh, I just talk. <clears throat> I just say the lines and talk. I'm gonna get inside my car. Right. You're getting inside your car. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so Sorry. Dino, what's your question for the Pop Oracle? Um, my question, 
question would be Community coming back for another season Is Community coming back for another season? Oh. Yeah Well I know I hope so but let's see what the we what the Pop Oracle says Yeah no one knows yet Maybe Via Sandman with NBC. So can we get the song list up? Here we go I'm spinning the wheel of eight The suspense is killing me Song number six, Horse Graveyard. <laughs> now I'm just saying, what are, what are the other songs? Are they all about death? <laughs> no, no, this is the only one. <laughs> Play it, Sandman. <laughs> Uh, all of the community fans. Right? Um, 
But uh, but you know the great thing about the great thing about you, Dino, is that if, if community goes, we still have uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenhole. Well, we don't know about that either. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they took that off the uh, the air. They're they're gonna see. They're gonna rerun it again. See if uh, it does it any better in the rating. I don't think it did very well. Uh, but I have a moral oral special coming up. Uh, my other show that got canceled. Uh, three or four years ago. We're doing a half hour special that's uh, coming up in the next month or two. Excellent. Well, Dino, uh, yeah. thank you for, for, for being a part of this, for asking Yeah, sorry. Me. Sorry about everything. No. <laughs> it was wonderful. Uh, give it up okay. for Dino Stamatopoulos. <laughs> thank you very much. And I just want to say, right. as in your book, you mentioned that a death isn't always necessarily a death. It could be a new beginning. Yeah, a yeah. new beginning. Exactly. There'll be another show. Yeah. yeah, we'll do more. We'll do more stuff. Excellent. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll do one more question. One more question from the audience, okay? Sure. Paula, you can let you can let Dino go back to his moon mooning. <laughs> Drinking and mooning. Okay, see ya. See ya, Dino. All right. Bring up the Radio 8 ball one more time. Let's pick one more question. One more question, okay? Who got the music? Last question. Who's it going to be from? Yeah. Are you going to read it? Am I supposed to read this? Yes, yeah, read, read it. Uh, I can't read their, their name, but it says... Oh. That, we're not going to do that because we can't read their name. I'll, re I'll reach in because we want to keep this moving. Ryan Smith. Last question from Ryan Smith. Come on down, Ryan. Come on. Ryan Smith. What is your question for the Pop Oracle? Well, I just moved here and I've tried all over to find... Here's the mic! I just moved here two weeks ago. I've been looking all over for like a good cupcake place. I've tried a couple different ones, but I can only find vegan cupcakes. So my question is, why are there only vegan cupcakes in Olympia? That's a great question! Why are there only vegan cupcakes in Olympia? Will you spin the wheel? Song list? Song number one is Trucker Song. The answer to Ryan's question. Why only vegan cupcakes in Olympia, Washington? in the sky, no bears in the air, no bugs in my rug or my bed or my hair, no troubles at the border, no struggles with my order, no faulty old-fashioned phone booth, still my quarter north wind don't howl, dispatcher don't growl, no flying jay shower with a missing bath towel, fog dissipate, sandman stay awake, I got a date with my mate, I don't wanna be, gotta get home to my baby, gotta get home to my baby, gotta get home to my baby, I gotta get home to my gal. Trucking since I was 18, no meth on my breath. I got to stay clean. I'll never be rich, but I can daydream. Gotta get on this mug out. 18 years, 18 wheels, 18 years of caffeine pills, six days on the road. That's 18 meals of truck stop food that makes me ill. Gotta get on to my baby. Gotta get on to my baby. Gotta get on to my baby. I gotta get on to my gal. My wife and I want a nice 
last life, so I try to live without strife, be a nice guy, drive my truck up and down the I-5, avoid annoying talk shows with white guys, but lately, and I gotta state this plainly, driving for J.B. Hunt drives me crazy, it's like the biscuits done fell off my gravy train. This makes me angry, gotta get on to my baby, gotta get on to my baby, gotta get on to my baby, I gotta get on to my guy, gotta get on to my baby, gotta get on to my baby, no whips, butts, or motherfucking babies, gotta get on to my motherfucking lady. That's just a song from, uh, just I wrote while driving many thousands of miles. What do you think, Ryan? About the answer, that is the answer to your question. I can kind of understand. I mean, you were rushing to get home to your baby, right? So, potentially, if you were driving to get groceries, maybe you forgot, like, butter, so there's only nutrition. So, there's only <laughs> actually, actually, I, I really just thought it was a, you know, you're obviously homesick, you know, and, and you're, you know, for you, like the stand-in for your baby in the song is that cupcake, whatever, the cupcake of home that you're, that you're yearning for. Where are you from originally? Uh, well, most recently North Carolina. They have good cupcakes there? Pretty good. Got red, good red velvet cupcakes. Can you get a vegan cupcake in North Carolina? I think they've heard of them. <laughs> so, it's like it's an imbalance. There's a stark imbalance. Olympia has some, we need more of North Carolina's cupcakes. And I mean, just one, I mean, you know, just, some, oh, yeah. somewhere. It's, people look at me like I'm crazy when I ask if they have normal cupcakes. <laughs> Ryan, let me, just, let me just say, you're not crazy, and it's not your fault. <laughs> Well, that, my friends, is how Radio 8 Ball works. Thank you very much for participating in this. We have that uh, closing music there for a second. Sammy, come back here for one second. We're going to do... So, the last thing we like to do here... Hey, you guys, just hold that for one second. Hold that thought for one second. Uh, just so you know... Uh, everyone put in their questions. We didn't get to everyone's questions, but I'd like to get a nice read on what the what the thoughts of the room are. So we're just going to read these questions out, and then we'll be finished here. So, and if you can read, if you can't read it, just toss it away, Sam. Man, you start. I think I'm ready to date. What kind of woman should I go for? Do borrowers exist beyond the world of fiction? <laughs> is it true that Carly Simon is actually Mick Jagger? Why is the sugar of Olympian manifest within mycelium? Will I ever quit having hot flashes? <laughs> How long do I have to wait to watch the brown edition? <laughs> Should I go back to school? <laughs> Will Jason have fun in South America? Why am I in the moment I am in? Why do birds suddenly appear? Where do I go? Will I get a dog this year? Should I go to school and study psychology, child, adolescent this year? Why does Olympia fight with itself so much? Will I ever get a job in my career field? Should I stay or should I go? I'm going to Florida at the end of the month, and I will be seeing my high school sweetheart after 28 years. Should we hook up? How much more ill is heaven with MCA as a resident? What's the meaning of life? Why does my boyfriend love cute kittens so much? Can fatalism and free will coexist? Will I ever find a dude that isn't an asshole and not gay? What is, my, what is my life's work? What is the best I have to offer? Should I follow my music dream? What are the real art, odds that art, specifically music, can save and revitalize American culture? What does the daydream believer believe now? Will I be bald by age 30? I'm 38. <laughs> This price is 50, actually. What does cuntish mean? How can we get more big blues acts to Olympia? 
What will this upcoming year hold for me? Will it stick around or move away? Will I stick around or move away? That's the last question. That's the last question. It's the one for all of us. What will the upcoming year hold for me? Will I stick around or move away? Thank you all for participating in Radio 8 Fall. Until next time, I'm your host, Mark Ross Jones. Saying thank you to Sandman. Thank you to all of you from Hollywood and Boot. And until next time, I wish you lots of spine tingling, synchronicities, connections with the natural world, and all the inspiration you can handle. Good night. <laughs> Starburns! What's his name? Starburns. Tito Stanatopoulos. Tito Stanatopoulos. Starburns. Gotta love that name too. Alright, so while we're getting ready for, uh, for what's up next, we're gonna give you a little hit at our sponsors. So we'd like to thank the Weekly Volcano. K Records. All four no Perusa. Just keep clapping, everybody. Ray Boyer. Capital City Guitars! Last Word Books! Human Field Jones Society! Volcano Vapor Cafe! Rainy Day Records! Old School Pizzeria! Insanity Shack! And lastly, Olympia Power and Light, the outstanding local publication. Olympia Power and Light. You can get them now? And our next two award presenters actually hail from Olympia Power and Light. Uh, one of them is the uh, founder, and the other is the uh, music and uh, entertainment writer. Please welcome your next presenters to the mic in the category of acoustic, folk, and bluegrass, and also the award for reggae, Mr. Tucker Peril and Matt Green! Tucker Peter Till has been writing about local music since the 1980s, if I count correctly, that's at least 20 years. Um, long time. So, Tucker, you've been writing about Olympia music for more than two decades. Sum it all up. Well, it, it's great to see the diversity of the uh, all the different musicians not afraid to uh, play um, what what's c coming from their heart, you know, not so much doing like genres and everything, and and, and, and uh, mixing it up with other musicians. It's just a great uh, melting pot here at Olympia. So it's great. Yeah, talk to Dr. Peter Taylor, best music writer in Olympia, and at Olympia Power Night, a little cheap plug here. We want to write about music. We want to write about your band. Send us information about your band. We'll give it to Tucker if he thinks it's cool. It's good. He'll write about it. We'll publish it. If you want to write about uh, music in Olympia, yeah, get a hold of us too. We're always looking for new writers. But for now, we have awards to give out. Wait, if you're, if you're playing a show, let them know too. If you're playing so a show. Put it on the calendar. If you're playing a show, we have a calendar. We have a, in the paper. We have online. Give us your music news. All right. To announce the award for acoustic folk and bluegrass, Mr. Tucker Peterton. Okay. The um, official selections are the Blackberry Bushes, Erev Rath, Hades Market, The Hinges, Holy Mountain Boys, Science, and Xavier and David. The envelope. The judge's pick for acoustic folk and bluegrass is... This was extremely close between first, second, and third. A tie for first and second is Science and the Blackberry Bushes. We need to break this in half, I guess. Okay. And the fans pick for First Acoustic Folk and Bluegrass. Yeah. Woo, Science! Thank you.
That's Justin Stang from Science. And now the award for best reggae in Olympia. And this is not going to be very uh, suspenseful because there's only one candidate, but they deserve the award for bringing reggae to Olympia. And the winner is High Ceiling, of course. He's playing a gig in Shelton tonight, so they're not here. They're around all the time. Go see them. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Tucker. Yes, Give it for Jeremy keeping the technology working here, folks. Jeremy, right here, keeping the PowerPoint. Construction PowerPoint. Give it up for this guy. All right, so our uh, next presenters that will be um, coming to the stage, they're going to be giving the awards for singer-songwriter, first off, and then after that, international slash foreign language awards. So, um, let me introduce the manager of the Brown Edition, Lee Brooks, and joining him tonight, owner and founder of Big Blue Band Productions, who hosts numerous music festivals throughout the South Sound, Bart Gordon. <laughs> What's up, Olympia? Hello, guys. How you doing? By the way, you might not see me under a presenter in there because I have a last minute fill-in, so I have no clue what I'm doing right now. So check it out. He doesn't either. I'm Bart from Big Blue Van Music. You might know me from Tugboat, Annie's Open Mic, Rife Lake Concert Series, i.e. Rife Stop, The Wiggle in the Wetlands, or possibly you might know me from Drunk Downtown. And a great Subaru mechanic, Steve I am Otto. Thank you. You got a Subi? It was hard tonight to come down to the Capitol Theater and be a presenter. It's May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. I want to strap on my sombrero, play my guitar, drink tequila to the super moon. But I'm here supporting. Olympia is a mecca of music. It's amazing to me that we have enough Artists and bands to fill genres and give out awards. And people are willing to recognize this and make this event happen too. Maybe you didn't get picked tonight. Maybe you're gonna win an Oli. It doesn't matter to me. All you folks make the Olympia music scene and that's what makes this town special to me. And before I wrap this up, we do this presentation. I want to give a shout out to uh, our fallen musicians here in town. Allison Patella, rock on. Steve Munger, I'll hear your horn for the rest of my life. Again, my name is Bart, I'm with Big Blue Band Music. If you need to rent a stage, or rent a PA system, or you wanna play an outdoor festival, get a hold of me. Or you can talk to me and I'll talk to you too. Uh, so by the way, we wanna say uh, with Allison and uh, Munger, um, they're not here with us anymore. They're people that we lost this last year, and I would like to personally dedicate my energies here to them and their families, and we miss them. Absolutely. So how about this presentation? Try to start bringing it up, or who's bringing it up? Who's winning this? The official selections will come up here in Owen. Oh, goodness. Angelo Spencer. Woo! Eric. Harvard Meyer, Kendall Winter, Kimia Dawson, Mayor Daniel Steiner, Paul Maurer, Scott Askew, Stuart Stone. Oops. It's okay, guys. It's okay. It's an apple. It's an apple. You can take it. Thanks, Jeremy Seaver. So singer or songwriter, the judges pick. Can we leave? Goodness. Extremely close. The singer songwriter, Powell 
Paul Maurer wins this one. And next we have Best uh, International Foreign Language. This man is a genius. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I paid him for that. And, and, and in impeccable. Impeccable fashion. Thank you. Miguel, help me with that. Um, I think you're supposed to leave now. Oh, okay. But you have to give that back to her. She's, okay. I'm so confused. <laughs> so right, the, Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were doing the, the foreign language one. Now we, we have the fans pick for singer-songwriter. And that is... By the way, if you didn't know, I just said this a little bit ago. Like, I just got up here. I have no clue what the hell is happening right now. But my friend didn't make it, and so I was picked to do this. So, for the award, the fan pick for best singer-songwriter is... Kimby Dobson. Oh my God, that's a shoe, right? Where are you, Kimia? Are you going to try to accept this for Kimia? As with most working musicians, Cinco de Mayo, they're actually making money someplace else, right? Now. So it was hard. Yeah, that's yeah, that's why I'm here. So the next category is international foreign language. Let's give it up for international and foreign language. As you see, we have a plethora. Oh yeah. A plethora of selections, including. See, I. Yeah, one They didn't tell me how to. You would say that again. Say his name again or her. Yeah, what he said. Yan Yan Wu is the only person in the category. So you win. Congratulations! Are you here? Do you have a friend? Or a, oh, she's just going to take that right from my hand. Oh, but he's going to take it. See, she's working tonight, making the money. Leave it up to Oli to have a music awards on a holiday. I know it's not our holiday, but thank you guys for coming out. Thanks for having us up here. Thank you guys for winning, and we'll give it back up to China and Morgan. Thanks to Oli and you rock. We applaud everybody. Give it up for your great presenters right here. Follow along. Okay, audience, how we do? We still having fun? Uh, <laughs> okay, we got a great musical act coming out here in just a minute. I want to make sure everything's buttoned up before we bring them out. So give this enough sound, get your beer, get back in the seats. You're not going to want to miss this one. See you in just a second.
to do has to do the pop awards. I said absolutely that would be perfect because uh, our early achievements were well, all our achievements were in pop. And uh, besides having 11 Billboard hit singles on the Hot 100. Nine of those top 40, three of those top 10, two of those number one. And the first gold records ever earned on a Northwest label by Northwest artists for number one hits in the nation. Is somebody saying louder? Can you turn the volume up, please? So, uh, I, is that better? Is that loud enough? Okay, good. Uh, so, although I haven't had the pleasure of hearing all of the people who are up for the um, Pop Award, I'm presuming that's what I'm seeing here. Is that correct? So, the nominees are Best F Tigers. I can imagine, <laughs> I can imagine what that stands for. <laughs> Ethan Tucker, <laughs> Fabulous Downey Brothers, <laughs> Reckles Brown, <laughs> Tender Forever, <laughs> and the envelope, please, Ashley. What's up, Ashley? The suspense. <laughs> Okay, this is the fans' pick for pop artist. Tender forever. Congratulations, where is the representative for Tender Forever? Congratulations, Tender Forever. That was that was the fans' pick, and the judges' pick for best pop is a tie. Ethan Tucker Band and Tender Forever. Congratulations. Is there someone here from uh, yeah. 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 Alright, I don't know if we're gonna rip this in half or or, or just pass it back and forth visitation rights or whatever. But um Thanks guys. For this I don't know who the judges were, but Where's Tender Forever? Are they here? She's in France. <laughs> That's a very good point. When, when we were inducted into the Northwest Music Hall of Fame, they gave us one gold record. And so then we asked for one for each person. So I hope there'll be another one for Tender Forever. Funk, Blues, and Jazz Awards. The nominees are the Brown Edition. Yeah! Go, Joe, go! <laughs> That's the name of a band, you know. John Kroarkin. Tarek and Lizzie. And the envelope, please, Ashley. I'll trade you. And the winner is, fans and judges pick both funk, blues, jazz, and here it is, the Brown Edition. sure if we we're actually going to win this one, um, and I have a little tiny statement written by the band. They wanted you to hear 
I didn't want to do this. They wanted me to do this, so I'm gonna do this. They're actually playing a gig right now. They're getting paid really well at the West Side uh, El Serape. In case you guys are leaving, around just playing the El Serape. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm recording over another gig. I can't do that. So, dear. <laughs> All right, after party at El Serape. Uh, I didn't say that. So, dearest Olympians, the Brown Edition and Funketeers. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for such a frickin' sweet award. Is scribble an honor that we will cherish till the next Holy Music Awards. Sug. Sorry, so sorry. We couldn't be here to accept. Fuck this. Okay, so I'm, I'm Lee Brooks. I'm the manager of the band. I don't play in the band. That's why they're there playing. But I got to say that I am pretty instrumental in helping this thing happen. And thank you guys. I love you, Olympia. Thank you for loving us. Keep on loving us. Okay. And, woo. Lifetime Achievement Award. And I've got to tell you that um, of all my achievements with the Fleetwoods, my proudest is Gretchen's Sweet 16, which is my first solo CD. And it's a Billboard Critics pick for 10 best albums of the year. And I have received a Lifetime Achievement Award or two as well. But this one goes to Someone who's a little older than I am because I'm, well, I was sweet 16 when I made my album. I'm a leap year baby and now I'm 18. So I'm too young for this. So it goes to Dave Shriver. <laughs> and he's not here to accept it. Is someone here to accept it? No, Dave isn't here. Um, he passed away April 9th, oh and um, I was his uh, life partner for the last six years. So I'm really honored to accept this award, and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about his earlier um, achievements and uh, many, many tours around the world and a story that this audience might appreciate. Um, he told me a story about when he was with, first of all, he played with um, Eddie Cochran. He was his bass player till Eddie died. So. I often wonder if Eddie hadn't died, what, how different Dave's life would be and he would really be a rocker, you know. Um, but he continued and he played with Trini Lopez for 10 years, traveled around the world many times. One of my favorite stories from him, from that era, is when they played in Paris and they played with the Beatles for three weeks on the same show. And um, yeah, and he got to know them quite well. He talks about how he was fishing buddies with Ringo. but. Um, the fun thing about it was he said that when the Beatles uh, first met the group, Trini Lopez, they were actually more interested in talking to Dave than to Trini because Dave was Eddie Cochran's bass player. And Eddie has quite a following in England. He died there. And so they were quite enamored with um, Dave's history with Eddie. In fact, um, Paul McCartney played an Eddie Cochran tune when he auditioned for the Beatles called um, 20 Flight Rock. So there was some connection there, and that was a fun story. Um, he played in a lot of different groups throughout the years, a lot of them in Olympia, 24 years in the Olympia Symphony. He played the stand-up bass as well as the electric bass. He was very talented. And we will all miss him very much, and I appreciate this. It's an honor to accept it. Thank you. was a shocking bit of news for me. I didn't realize Dave had died, and I am so glad that I was able to honor him a couple of years ago when friends got together from all over the country, and I was able to see some of those films of him with the Beatles and with Trini, and it, he, he really had a marvelous background, plus playing classical bass in the Olympia Symphony. So, an extra. We have one more Lifetime Achievement Award. Ashley. 
the envelope, please. <laughs> Actually, it's the award itself. Oh my goodness, it's another one of our wonderful musicians who's passed away, Steve Munger. Oh. I'm a fellow tenor saxophone player around Olympia. Some of you know that. I'm playing with these guys here. Johnny Lewis is a big man. I got to tell you a little story about Steve that, uh, that happened, uh, how I met Steve. Uh, it was probably uh, 1991. I'm playing in a wine shop on Capitol Boulevard. Uh, I've been playing a couple of years. I've been playing a real long time, but, but I'm thinking I'm pretty darn good. You know, I'm, I'm there playing in this little wine shop. And we're playing a little bit of uh, little Miles Davis. And so we have a little trio going, and a, a guy's walking by the, the front of the shop, and it's, it's this, this good-looking guy, tall, lean. He's got a saxophone hanging from his back. And he stops, and he looks in the wine shop, and he comes in. And this guy walks up. You know, we, we play a couple of tunes, and, and uh, the guy walks up to me, and he goes, do hey, you mind if I sit in on this next tune? I go, sure. He says, uh, he says, what do you want to play? I said, you know, let's play uh, uh, a great Miles Davis uh, tune called Four. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I, I go, geez, I hope this guy doesn't stink too bad. You know? <laughs> and uh, Steve gets out his horn and, and I go, why don't you take the first solo and then I'll take the second solo. You know, I thought maybe I'd give the guy a little, a little break, you know. And so we start playing, and, and Steve fires up for the first solo, and he smokes it. I mean, this guy is freaking smoking this thing. And I'm listening to this, this guy play tenor, and I'm thinking, oh, crap, I don't want to follow this guy. <laughs> and so he, he stops, and he kind of, you know, he, he's playing a solo, and he kind of turns to me like, okay, you're up, and I just go, no, no, you just, you just keep playing. Man. And so Steve plays, you know, another 12 bars or so, and then we, we finish the tune up. And so uh, we get done, and I go, who are you? And he goes, so my name's Steve Munger. And I go, well, uh, nice to meet you, Steve. And Steve just kind of smiles, and he walks out of the shop. And so I play around town for the next few years, and I, of course, as soon as I get done with the gig, you know, I go, who was that guy? He says, oh, that's, that's Steve Munger. I go, man, that's great. And, and he says, everybody goes, yeah, you don't know Steve Martin? No, I knew him town. You know, I didn't know who this guy was. So we run into each other over the years. We don't play a lot together because if you got Steve Munger to band, you don't need me. <laughs> so we, we played it a, you know, a few times together. And uh, eventually my brother decides he's going to have a St. Patrick's Day party. And so he wants to get a group in, to, a, little, a little quartet to play at a St. Patrick's Day party. He says, who do you think we should get? I said, you need to get Steve Munger. I said, well, my brother, uh, why don't you play? He said, no, if we're going to have a St. Patrick's Day party, I want somebody there that plays better than me. I don't want me. So Steve comes in with his quartet, uh, you know, just some kind of lightweight players around Olympia, guys like, you know, Joe Bach and you know, some of those guys. So they come in and start playing. and. Uh, and this is probably 10 years later. So he plays, we start playing, I come up, we start trading fours, and uh, Steve leans over to me after the first set and he goes, hey man, you got a lot better. And I said, you know, thanks Steve. I said, that's, that's really a comment. I said, but I'm still no Steve Munker. Steve, this is for you, buddy. that Steve played beautiful flute. The first time I saw him, he was that handsome young man playing flute at Unity Church, where I sang some of my own compositions. And I was at the celebration of Steve's life. We often ran into each other, and he said, why aren't we playing gigs together? You know, we're both working musicians, and somehow it just didn't happen. But he's a great loss, and, and I hope a great inspiration to a lot of you. Have you heard of Steve Munger? Have you heard of him? for making me a part of this uh, wonderful evening. I hope that it grows and becomes a really marvelous 
Oli Music Awards that more and more people know about. Bye -bye. Thank you, Gretchen. So, just like this next category, we don't stop. So, um, for the category of hip hop. That is not my stage name. That's my Facebook name. <laughs> what up, I go by Smoke. I produce for a crew called Old Dominion, and almost every single one of these official selections here. Um, so let's get right to it, right? Yeah. All right. We got for best hip hop artists. We got Afrock, <laughs> AKA. Collective Love Unlimited. Free Whiskey. And Hollywood Kill Crew. All these guys are gems. They're all winners. No matter who wins the actual award, they're all winners. I don't even have an envelope. Oh, I've always wanted to open an envelope. So, we're gonna go with which one first? We're gonna go with judges first? Let's see who we've got here. Extremely close, but between first, second, and third, it's Matt Smokovich. I won. Just joking. Afrock! Is Afrock here? Afrock? Scream if your name's Afrock. No. no. Bummer. Okay. So, we're gonna go to the fan picks. This is kind of awkward. I can read his name backward and it's the same as it is forward. AKA! I know AKA. Uh oh. Swag it downward, sir. I just want to say, uh, I guess uh, this is a little affirmation. If you just work really hard, uh, you might get some respect from your peers. And I just want to say thank you very much, everybody. My grandma's in the house. Grandma! <laughs> We're out past this, dude.
both hung our hearts too far out on a crooked line. Do we dare to look when it's always all at stake and it's all tied together with a little scrap of lace? Let's go. 
on shore They don't leave an inch of space I might be driving faster Than I need to now No lane to slow down Even with this crowd Everywhere There's space in the end you water Gets to be the same
brave to do that song, but I think it's pretty brave to be a solo performer. So the nominees for the best solo performance, AKA Andros Jones, Justin Stang, Kendall Winter, and Moth Rider. The envelope, please. All right, this is the judge's pick here. And the award for best solo performance for the judge's pick is Kendall Winter, ladies and gentlemen.
Sorry, guys.
years to come because Olympia's music scene is so unique and indestructible. It's Woo! unbelievable some of the bands and shows I have seen or been a part of over the last 30 years. Events like this make me proud to be from Olympia. Yeah. So I am now going to present the award for Rock. And our, our uh, nominees are Anna Mercury, Woo! Elbow Cooley, Glass Elevator, yeah. Horse Bodies, yeah. Lake, yeah. and Resident Kings. Yeah. The Envelope Freeze. Envelopes. Horse Bodies! I'm going to start with the fans pick. Fans pick for Rock. Glass Elevator! Fans pick for Rock. Horse bodies. Anybody not presenting horse bodies here? Horse bodies. And stick around. The horse bodies. What's up, everybody? What's up? Uh, we just want to thank everybody uh, for you know nominating us. We're super stoked to play tonight, um, and uh, that's about all I got to say. Uh, we really, really appreciate it, and we can't wait to rock it in a couple minutes for you. So I hope you guys' feet are ready to click and come up here and dance, because we're about to put on the show for you. Uh, congratulations. We're going to move on to the judges' pick. Judges' pick for best rock band, Resident Kings. Thanks. This is a really cool award. 
you know, I was listening to what everybody was saying about uh, Steve Munger and the other people that passed, and I just wanted to say a shout out to people, other people who have died recently. Uh, yeah. Tom Kaiser from the band Death Squad. Yeah. When you were in the metal one, I was thinking metal, and I had to think about him. So uh, the other guys are here up there somewhere. Thank you. Moving on to the next category, which is punk. We have uh, four, four nominees. The Deceptives, Kozo, The Maxines, Meowtane, and The Envelope, please. Kozo sucks. The Envelope, please. Alright, we have the same pick from both the judges and fans. And the winner is Kozo. The judges pick was extremely close on this one. I'd like to accept this pizza without the uh, award. Wait, the word goes to pizza. This isn't planned at all. There's no bribes involved. But we do know uh, Jared Warren and Jerry Ziegler and uh, Calvin Johnson. He doesn't know what he's saying. We know like a lot of cool people. Can I borrow your underwear? Congratulations. No, but seriously, thanks for appreciating us artistically in the sense of visually and audibly. Thank you. Congratulations. And Jeremy. I brought the great recipients, these drunk guys right here, everybody. All right. Next presenter we got coming up to present the best live solo and experimental awards. Uh, both members of a band called Glass Elevator, please welcome Wally Van Wenger and Jane Jabberwock! Good evening. So it looks like what we got going here, well we're, we're going to move this right along. That's what we're going to do. Uh, right now we're doing the uh, awards for, it looks to me like, the uh, best solo performance. Now. I don't know how many of you guys out there, we've seen a lot of bands tonight. We saw, we saw Chris Sand do some solo stuff, Sand Man, that was great. But it's a hard gig doing the solo thing, like, you know, you gotta stand up there and you kind of feel goofy. So, to me, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, like, a few years back, a lot of years back, like, they gave Santana, like, a Grammy for, like, when he did that thing with the dude from Matchbox 20 or something. Yeah, and everyone called him brave. I don't know. He was pretty brave, yeah, he was pretty brave to do that song, but I think it's pretty brave to be a solo performer. So, the nominees for the best solo performance, a.k.a. Andros Jones. Justin Stang, Kendall Winter, and Moth Rider. In the envelope, please. And now, the fan pick here. However, the fan pick goes to AKA. Let's hear it for AKA. Two awards, one night, my friend. Congratulations. All right, he's good. All right. So, uh, in the next category, is uh, the experimental category. Um, 
Okay. No problem, no, yeah. Um, and so the, uh, the nominees are All Green Lights, uh, Arrington D. De Dinacio, Dion, Dion, Dioniso, thank you, uh, Pop It, and Sleep in Sundays. And so, uh, the envelope. Yeah, hold that, dude. And the award goes to the hardest one I had to pronounce, Arrington de Dioniso. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Uh, very, very proud and honored to stand here on this historic stage, which was once shared by Roy Rogers and Trigger and Judy Garland all those years ago at the historic Capitol Theater. Thank you very much for my award in uh, Best uh, Experimental uh, Music, I guess. Yeah! Right, thank you very much. Let's hear it for Arrington, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Arrington. Okay, well, so we need a uh, couple minutes for our next act to get ready. Stick around, we got one more great musical act, a couple more great uh, awards, and we'll go home and sleep. Uh, but for now, just give it, a, give it a second, grab some beer, grab a little more concessions. We'll have our next act in just a second. Talk to you soon. Oh, well, that's a shame. <laughs> Say fuck you to Calvin Johnson. Yeah. And I'd also like to mock him. Uh, hold on. <coughs> Freedom riders, let's yeah. give a boot to the backseat drivers. That's my mock right here. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay. So we have the official selections for the Lo Fi slash Indie Award. Low cars. There we go. Bacon Moon, everyone. Tenerifus. Low Blank, June Madrona, Letters, and Western Hymn. It was Ashley, right? Yes. We had two. Okay, cool. So this is a uh, this is the fans. See, this is a pit. All right, Bacon Moon, come on down. 
Anyone from the pork industry? Anyone? Oh, here we go. Here's Bacon Moon. And these guys are sharp dressed. There you go. Here we go. I just want to say, vote union socialism now. David, also thanks to everybody. David, say something. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Take a move. Occupy and bacon. Uh, this is the judges pick, and um, we all know they're much more intelligent than the people. And uh, the winner is Western Hymn. Anyone from Western Him here? How about Western Her? He's gonna take this award because he's tall. Alright, now electronic. Okay, we're supposed to move the night along. I love having a mic here. Wow, there's thousands of you here. Well, I'd like to say I thought I would have the best hair, but um, China obviously does. Let's give a round for the hair of China. Okay. Electronic. One of my favorite sub genres. Genre. Whatever. Uh, automata or automata. Moth Rider. <laughs> Moth Rider just sounds cool. Uh, and four dimensional nightmare. I've had a couple of those. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you're gonna laugh. You laugh genuinely. <laughs> All right. And this judges pick only. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta see Ashley twice. Okay. There you go. Alright, I think you're gonna love this. Moth Rider, come on. So I've been sitting next to this guy and I was like, man, this guy's cool, I wanna meet him. <laughs> Hi, Moth Rider. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for uh, sticking around and waiting for Electronic to come up. <laughs> Glad everybody's uh, here. I want to see you tomorrow night at Jake's for the uh, Mega Masquerade. I'll be there. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you, Moth Rider. I'm from Seattle, and all we have is Phoenix Jones. Moth Rider can kick that guy's ass. Um, no judges, but was that like both? He won both? Yes. All right, he won both. I'm done. See you later. If you want to come enough gas money to get back to Olympia, hook up with me, I got some venues I can hook you up with. Bye guys. Thank you. Keep awesome ladies and gentlemen, give it up for them. All right, I'm pleased to announce that we have reached the ultimate final award of the night. The best song. Um, the presenter of our welcome to the stage is the man we all need to thank for making this night possible, for giving this opportunity to be here with y'all, bringing all these bands together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man responsible for everything you've seen tonight, Hobby Shrinky! Okay, so uh, you're right, I am responsible for all this tonight, and on behalf of everyone on the staff, I want to apologize. <laughs> no, really, there were, there were, there were, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be just a tiny bit long-winded, and I'm going to say this. There was a lot of people who said, when I had this idea, that this is not a good idea to do the Only Music Awards, because I, I really haven't been here that long, and I didn't know what I was doing. I've never put on an event before. Thank you. And those people were all right. So, so, I apologize to them. And this should have been a huge explosion and a huge catastrophe, and lots of lots of lives should have been should have been lost, but they weren't. And so, the the reason why it wasn't like as big a disaster as it really should have been is because of Morgan and China. So, give it up to your two hosts. They... There would be, there, if it weren't for them, there would be blood running through the streets after this event. Uh, give it up for Jimbo Jitsu, who's videographing this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the wind beneath my wings and the man that I, that I truly love, I'm in love with, and I love him in every sense of the word love, John Manini. Yeah. She, didn't, she didn't know I was in love with him until this very moment, but I am. Um, yeah, it is awkward, but but no, really, this this event would have been a huge catastrophe without John. And and okay, and last of all, and definitely not least of all, the OFS staff. 
because they, they had like built for this in a huge way. If we didn't have this space, this would not have happened. Uh, give it up for the light guy, Brian Karsten. And also give it up for two of the, the, the best people that I know. Jeremy and Ashley, they've been like wonderful. Yeah. I, I want you to say that the only reason I'm out here is because I lost both like a rock, paper, scissors and a coin toss with that. With, with that. <laughs> you, you, you want my what? Oh, sorry. Yeah. The award, okay. Yeah. I'm done with the thank yous, but really, thank you all for coming out. Right. Okay, the official selections. Uh, I had a lovely PowerPoint. I guess it's gone now, but anyways. The official selections. All You Need Is A Smile by Stuart Stone. Yeah! Have Some Fun by Resident Kings. Illusions by High Ceiling. Yes! Light of Breath by Paul Maurer. Yeah! Oli by Hollywood Kill Crew. Woo! And The Rally by Glass Elevator. Yeah! Yeah! Um, and we have two Never winners, one in each category. Hey, what happened to Supersonic Love, AKA? Oh, Supersonic Love by AKA. I'm yeah! sorry. It's on here. It's on here. It's my PowerPoint. I'm sorry. This is why I didn't want to be up here. There's, well, there's one of the reasons. There are many others. Now they know what you look like. <laughs> I know. I didn't want you guys to be able to track me down. I have a message for Germany. OK, a message for Germany coming up shortly after this. OK, so first, the fans pick. Oh, by the way, all of these are great songs. And I'm, I'm so thrilled. Like, a, a lot of bands in Olympia have a lot of new fans because of the Olympia Music Awards, and one of those new fans is definitely me. So I love all these songs. They're, they're all on my iTunes playlist. Okay, first song the fans pick is Illusions by High Ceiling. Is Daniel still here? Okay. And the judges pick for best song, and one of my, one of my personal all-time favorite songs that, that's ever been made by any band in Olympia, <laughs> I, 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 are they from Olympia? Yeah. Maybe they are. Rainbow Connection. Glass Elevator. Uh, Glass Elevator song, The Rally. So give it up for Glass Elevator. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Oh, here's Glass Elevator. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to Laurel Hen for these lovely, lovely awards. Um, yeah. Well, hey, that's nice of you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, quite an honor, and uh, thank you, Hobby, for putting this all together, and thank you all for coming out tonight. It's a pleasure to close out the evening with you. Get drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for all uh, coming out. This is uh, this is awesome to see all the support for a lot of local music, and. Uh, we hope to see you guys. Uh, the Olympia Independent Music Festival will also be coming up in July. And we'd love to see you guys out there. Um, thank you to the Capitol Theater, everyone. Hope to Good see night. You. Good night, everybody. Yeah. All right, everyone. We're so glad you made it. You're so glad you made it through, that you came. And you stayed, and then you're all so fucking beautiful. Because if you guys are a bunch of ugly people out there, I don't know if I can handle it up here this whole night. But either way, thanks so much. All the music.